What are we supposed to make of the utilities now that Donald Trump is just a couple weeks away from the presidency? On the one hand, this is an industry that could benefit big from deregulation, especially when it comes to fossil fuels like coal. On the other hand, these utility stocks are all high yielders that many people own as bond market alternatives. It makes them a lot less attractive in an environment where the Fed is set to raise interest rates multiple times in 2017. The way I see it, the utilities are caught in a tug of war between the president-elect and the Fed. Take Dominion Resources, which is one of the largest players in the regulated power generation space. The thing about Dominion, though, it's got a bunch of additional businesses that should be bolstered by the Trump administration, beyond the fact that the utility side of things will have an easier time uh, once the EPA crackdown on coal plants ends. For starters, last year the company spent $4.4 billion to buy Questar, a natural gas pipeline storage and distribution company. Remember, which it then dropped down to its subsidiary, Dominion Midstream Partners, last month. I think 2017 could be the year of natural gas. On top of that, Dominion's proposed a pipeline to take gas from the Marcellus and Utica shale regions in Pennsylvania and Ohio. Bring it down to the Carolinas. They're working on a liquefied natural gas terminal in Maryland that will let them export the stuff. Now, Dominion stock rallied 13% last year, but it's got a notoriously BIG dividend. Yields nearly 3.7%. And you have to worry that income-seeking investors might sell this kind of stock in order to buy bonds as interest rates continue to rise. Can the stock keep climbing? Let's check in with Tom Farrell, the chairman and CEO of Dominion Resources, to get a better sense of how his company's doing and where it is headed. Mr. Farrell, welcome back to Mad Money. Happy New Year, Jim. Good to be with you. Oh, thank you, Tom. Same to you. Tom, are we finally at that moment where really well-run utilities that are also doing many other things that could augment their bottom line will be able to do better in a political regime that makes it so we should stop thinking of them as just simple bond market equivalents? Well, <clears throat> that's, a very, that's very possible. You know, we're a little bit different than most of our peers because we have a very large gas infrastructure business. Uh, when we build out, you mentioned our Cove Point uh, LNG facility, which will be finished later this year. Uh, the pipeline, the Atlantic Coast Pipeline, we're building with a couple of partners down to the Carolinas will be done in 19. Gas infrastructure will be almost half of the cash flows and earning streams at Dominion uh, Resources, which is, makes it quite unique. Uh, in this space and should allow, and the MLP structure is going to allow us to uh, grow our dividend faster than most of our peers. So, uh, you know, we're a little bit different uh, as we go into this. Deregulation will help uh, all of us. Uh, just the cost of regulation uh, will go down. Uh, and there's tax reform coming, and that's uh, sort of an open-ended question for utilities as well, exactly how that will all work itself through. Uh, over the next six to nine months. Well, I was thinking about you when uh, I was looking through your, ex you were always a very transparent company, You're talking about the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. You've got the FERC notice of schedule August 12, 2016. This president is pro-pipeline, okay? And I wanted to know whether you think, because you're a man in this industry who really knows things, does it matter that the president of the United States is pro-pipeline and wants pipelines to not be blocked by constituencies? I do think it, it helps, uh, but I would say in this particular case, our particular case with the Atlantic Coast Pipeline, you know, this is handled uh, at a very, uh, at an independent federal agency, FERC, right. uh, who actually issues uh, the permitting for uh, interstate gas pipelines, uh, which is what we're building here. It's a very professional uh, organization. The staff have been dealing with pipelines for decades, and they've done a very good job of processing this uh, application through. We got our draft environmental impact statement uh, at the very end of uh, last year, which is a very good sign uh, that we're going ahead with progress. We expect the final mm -hmm. permits uh, this summer, and it will be in, in construction in the fall uh, and be ready in 19. All but right. overall, it certainly helps to have a pro- Energy Infrastructure Administration. Right, because I just think, I mean, FERC is maybe professional, but they're, if you look at Dakota Access, Dakota Access is a good pipeline in terms of versus trains, but there are obviously people who, who came out against it, and the current president is certainly no fan. Let's put it that way. That can change. How about this? EPA, uh, we got uh, Attorney General Pruitt from Oklahoma coming in there. He has sued the EPA. 18% of your 2015 generating capacity by fuel is coal. Would you think that under, say, a Hillary Clinton regime, you would have had to phase that out much faster than under a regime that is uh, led by Donald Trump? Well, we'll have to see what happens with the clean power plant, uh, which um, you know, became final. It's in the courts right now. Um, it's, not, it's not a simple uh, thing to change. It's not like some of the other executive order. And 
I'm sure your viewers don't want to hear a long discourse on the difference between rulemakings and, and pure executive right. Administrative orders. Administrative law judges, right. But. Yeah, there's a big difference. Uh, the Clean Power Plan is not by executive order. It's by uh, regulation rulemaking. It's not quite this. You can't snap your fingers and change that. So there's a lot of, of time, actually, that will have to a process that will have to be gone through. So we're going to see how that comes out okay. over the next uh, Last thing I want to talk about is you're the lowest cost producer. We have lots of different data farms. They, come, they want to be in your area. Can you lower the cost of electricity, which does make everybody's life better? It's how you get, be good. It's a way to be able to better yourself, whether you be able to companies better themselves. Will you be able to lower the price of electricity more under a Trump regime than you could otherwise? Well, the big change for us is uh, these new gas-fired, the new technologies around gas-fired power plants. Uh, they uh, become very, very efficient. And uh, natural gas, particularly at these, at these prices where they are now, uh, when we finish our Greensville County power plant uh, next year, or in 18, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be the most efficient power plant in the United States, gas-fired power plant in the United States. Okay. And it helps produce billions of dollars of savings to customers over its 40-year life. So it, uh, you, can have, you will definitely have lower prices, but a lot of it has to do with technologies and the low gas prices. Right. Making sure that you have access to low-priced energy is a key to low prices for utilities. Well, well, let me follow up on that. I know that for generating capacity, oil is much bigger than your actual output, but do you think that OPEC is real? Do you think that oil can go up? Yes, I do. You do? Uh, we, we burn very little oil uh, in, at our company. Uh, very few com utilities actually use oil these days right. uh, to produce electricity. Um, but I do think you're going to see a firming of uh, prices uh, in oil. But I don't think you're going to see it back at $80. Fair or enough. $90. I think it'll be in these $50, in the $50. Area. All right, excellent. Tom Farrell, Chairman, President, and CEO of Dominion Resources, doing so many things right and making so much money for shareholders. Thank you so much, sir. Good to talk to you. Thank you, Jim. This has been one that I've been liking forever. Boy, I can't change my mind. I think it's getting better. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.